Hello everybody, Jonathan Rayo here with Simplify Guitar, and in this lesson I want to teach you how to play the song You've Got a Friend by Carole King. As always, I'm going to play through the song for you first, and then at the end I'll break it down and explain it to you in more detail. So make sure to stick around for that. For now, let's go ahead and get started playing through the song. When you're down in trouble you need some love and care and Nothing, no nothing is going right Close your eyes and think of me Soon I will be there So brighten Just call out my name And you know wherever I am I'll come running To see you again Winter, spring, summer sky above you grows dark and full of clouds the battle of wind begins to blow keep your head together now You just call out my name And you know wherever I am I'll come running To see you again Winter, spring, summer Take your soul if you let them Oh, but don't you let them You just call out my name And you know wherever I am I'll come running To see you So we're going to be using quite a lot of chords for this song, including some bar chords. So this is definitely not a simple song. It's going to be a little bit more on the complicated side. Uh, but we're going to be starting off with a G chord. And we can either play the G chord like this, with this shape, or we can play it with our second, third, and fourth finger. Um, for most of the song, I am going to be using this shape because I'm going to be 
uh, using chords within from the C chord family a lot, so it's going to make transitioning easier if I use this chord. And then from there, I'm going to go to an F sharp minor, which I'm going to play like this. So this is going to be my first bar chord I'm going to uh, come across, and I need to bar the second fret, and then I'm going to play with my second, I mean with my third and fourth finger, I'm going to press down on the fifth fret of the A and D string. So something to keep in mind with bar chords, just to make things a little bit easier, you want to press you want a bar on the sweet spot of the fret. So if I'm pressing on the second fret, the sweet spot is going to be, you know, three-fourths of the way up, like almost on top of the metal bar, just a little bit below it. And then press with the side of your finger, not directly with the pad, but press sideways like this so you can get more of the bony part of your finger pushing down on the strings, and that's going to help. You also want to put your thumb on the back of the guitar and press against it that way so you can get some counter pressure on that finger. And from that F-sharp minor, we're going to go to a B7, which I'm going to play like this. This is just an easier B7 to play than the uh, bar chord alternative. So it's going, to be, it's going to look like this. It looks very similar to an E major. Uh, I'm just going to be switching these two fingers, the strings that they're playing. So this is my B7. The important thing here, though, is that you don't strum that low E string. Uh, if you play the B7 bar chord, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about that as much. Here with this one, you can't play that low E string or it's going to get muted and it's going to sound like an E chord. And then from here, we're going to play an E minor. And this is one of the reasons why I use this B7 because I'm going from here to an E minor. So super easy switch to go from this B7 to this E minor. Um, and very, very similar shape. So it's an easy transition. Okay, and then I've got an A minor 7 chord, which I'm going to play like this, and I want to make sure to start my strumming on that A string here as well. And then we have a D7 chord, which is going to look like this. If this is my D major, I need to get this finger over here. Obviously, I can't do that with my hand, so I need to reposition my fingers and get this finger down there. Uh, so this is my D7, and for the D7 chord, I want to avoid any D chord. I want to avoid the low E and the A string and start my strumming on the D string. So I'm only going to be strumming the bottom four strings. The next chord that shows up is a B minor 7, which I'm going to play like this. In this particular case, I don't need to bar that low E string. If I do, it's just going to make the barring process just, you know, one string harder. So just to make it a little bit easier for me, I like to bar just from the A string down and just avoid strumming that low E string. That's going to be easier for me than trying to bar the whole thing. And then the next chord that shows up is a C major, which is just going to look like this. Also for the C major, you want to avoid that low E string, so I can use my thumb just to mute it here and strum from the A string down. After that, we're going to have a G7. Now, if I go back to my regular G chord, which looks like this, with my second, third, and fourth finger, this is another reason why I want to play my G like this, because I'm going to need this finger to play a G7. So if I'm here on G, I'm going to go from the G to a G7. I'm going to remove my fourth finger, and I'm going to put my first finger down on that same string, on that high, a, high E string, but on the first fret, okay? So I'm going from this G7, I'm sorry, from this G to a G7. Both of which I'm going to strum all six strings. And then we're going to be playing an F chord, just a regular old F major. And in this case, I'm going to play this F, uh, which, again, is another bar chord. So I'm barring the first fret, and i got to bar the whole thing. I can't, I can't cheat for this one, because this first fret of the low E string is my F note. So I need to hear that note very clearly. Uh, and then I'm going to play the E shape with these three uh, fingers over here. My second, third, and fourth finger are making that E major shape. Um, but I'm just barring that first fret and moving that whole thing up. So this is my F major chord. And the last chord that shows up is the A7, which is going to look like this. In this case, I'm going to play it with my second and third finger. You can play it with your second and fourth if you'd like, um, but it's a little bit crowded for me. Uh, if I don't have to play an A major uh, in this song, then I'm just going to play my A7 like this with my second and third, and it just gives me a little bit more breathing room. So for strumming for this song, I'm going to be using the folk pattern, which is a nice, easy four-beat strum pattern. We're going to have four down strums with an up strum added after beat three and four, and then we're going to repeat. Important thing for this song is that for the first beat of each measure, we're just going to pluck the root note of the chord. So let me just hold a G chord, for instance, and the root note of the G chord is going to be that low E string. So for beat one, 
I'm just going to hit that string by itself. And then for beat two and four, I'm going to strum harder. So one and three are going to be softer. One is just going to be a single note. And then two and four are going to be louder. So again, I'm just going to hold that G chord and play the strum pattern while I count the beats out loud. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one. Now, you'll need to pay attention in this song. There are a lot of chords that are only lasting for half a measure. So if one of our measures is four beats long, because this song is in 4-4 four, four time, then if a, if a chord is only lasting for half a measure, that means it's only going to last for two beats. So if my strum pattern, like we just went over, uh, is four beats, then if a chord lasts for half of that, then it's going to only last for beat one and two, and then we need to switch to a new chord for beat three and four, and then a lot of times, you know, we'll have two half note chords uh, right next to each other. So, you know, we'll play one chord for half of a measure, another chord for the other half of the measure, and then we'll switch and go back to a new chord for the new measure. This happens for the very first line of the verse when it says, and you need some love and care. Right there we have an E minor, then we go to B7, and then back to E minor. And for the E minor B7 transition, both of those chords are only lasting for half a measure, making a total of one. So the E minor is one half, and it's gonna last for beat one and two. Then we switch to B7 on beat three, and we're gonna be on B7 for beat three and four. And then we switch from B7 back to E minor, for beat one of the new measure, and that E minor will be back to a normal last for, lasting for a whole measure. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and... And you need some love and care. All right, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you in the next lesson. Take care.